Yeah, uh, because uh, the, the lunch break seems too short, right? So we will shift the schedule up to 2, 2 o'clock. Okay. And uh, also another announcement is uh, Professor Shagan Wen would like to give an extra lecture right, on tomorrow. Yeah. So after the last talk, he will continue uh, his talk today. Yeah. Besides the one in the morning. Yeah. Just two, these two announcements. Yeah. So all the schedules in the afternoon is shifted by yeah. 30 minutes. Yeah, by 30 minutes. Okay, let's start the second talk of the afternoon session. Uh, it is by Professor Gu, and he's going to tell us about vortex line condensation. Thanks. Thanks. Uh, so, uh, yesterday uh, I'm talking about uh, some uh, kind of uh, practical model. I realized the topological basis in 2 plus 1. So today uh, uh, I would like to slightly shift to uh, three dimensions. Uh, and uh, oh, hello. Oh, okay. Uh, particularly, uh, uh, I want to talk about uh, uh, this kind of uh, new exotic phases called the uh, bosonic topological insulator because uh, people might familiar with about. Uh, Electronic topology insulate, which can be realized uh, in a uh, free fermion system, and a lot of material has been um, uh, actually discovered for this uh, uh, three dimensional electronic topology insulator. But uh, uh, it's kind of uh, quite uh, non trivial and, and exotic to realize uh, uh, topology ins insulators in bosonic system because uh, free bosons only support a superfluid phase. And uh, if we want to realize uh, uh, some insulating phase must turn on strong impressions. For example, in the Bose Hubble model, we need a very large U to realize the mod phase. But uh, uh, the, then we have an interesting question, kind of uh, whether we can realize uh, some non-trivial uh, mod insulator phase uh, that are distinguishable with the usual uh, mod insulator phase in both our system. So today I try to uh, answer this uh, 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 questions uh, by thinking about uh, some field theory approach. Yeah, basically uh, think about uh, vortex line condensation in 3D and uh, uh, showing that uh, there are chances for realizing three different kinds of root phase for bionic topology insulators. And this work is in collaboration with uh, uh, Dr. Ted Penye, uh, who is the postdoc at PI. Uh, <coughs> okay, so let me just briefly review this uh, story of uh, um, symmetry protected topolo uh, topological phenomena in Fermat system, particularly uh, uh, we start from this uh, free Fermat system. And uh, uh, in both 2 plus 1D and 3 plus 1D, uh, in electron material, it's uh, uh, relatively easy to find uh, uh, this kind of uh, non trivial symm symmetry protected uh, topological phases because uh, for free Fermat system, the underlying idea is very simple. Uh, because uh, if we think about uh, a certain preferment system with some uh, surface state, and if the surface state uh, uh, carries some prima doublets, and uh, then we can just use uh, uh, time reversal symmetry to protect it. Uh, so this is a particular 2 plus 1D material that has been first discovered, and also there are lots of three-dimensional material has been discovered. So, so uh, uh, as Shogun mentioned uh, uh, this morning, uh, uh, from this kind of point of view, we can define a, a large class of uh, so-called uh, uh, symmetry-protected topological phases in correlated bosonic system. So, so let me just repeat the properties of this kind of uh, uh, symmetry-protected topological phases we want to consider. So first, uh, they can have the same symmetry as a trivial disorder phase, and uh, uh, they must have gap ground state without long-range correlations, and uh, uh, the excitations do not carry fractionalized uh, statistics. It's uh, diff very different from the fractional quantum pore state at this point. And uh, actually, they are indistinguishable from the trivial disorder states if the symmetry is broken in the bulk. So that's the meaning of the symmetry protection, which means without symmetry, it's uh, completely trivial. Um, and, uh, <coughs> but uh, it has some non trivial properties such that uh, uh, if we preserve the symmetry, we add a, a 
small accommodation to the system, uh, there is no phase transition. Uh, actually, this kind of uh, uh, statement not just means it has a constant gap. Uh, actually, it means that uh, regardless what kind of perturbation you add, uh, there is no adiabatic path you can connect this state to a trivial state. But this adiabatic path we considering may cross over some extremely strong interaction region. So it's in a sense the topology of the phase diagram. <coughs> uh, so it's not uh, quite a trivial. And finally, uh, for practical purpose, we hope that there will be um, gapless edge states protected by symmetry. Uh, in the sense that uh, if the symmetry is not explicit or spontaneous broken on the boundary, then it's always uh, uh, some uh, gap, gapless edge states. So uh, in, in the uh, 2 plus 1D system, the 1 plus 1D one, one uh, uh, boundary is always a precise kind of uh, uh, gapless, uh, uh, in the sense that the spectrum has a continuum dispersion. But in 3 plus 1D, if here is gapless, so sometimes also uh, refer to this uh, topological phases with uh, ground state uh, degeneracy. So, so it, it just saying there's no way to realize the trivial disorder state on the phase, on the surface. Okay. So uh, with this kind of non-trivial property, uh, then we can just define what is the uh, bosonic topological insulation. So uh, from the name, uh, it's very easy to imagine that uh, so-called bosonic topological insulation, we try to impose the same symmetry class for the electronic topological insulator. Namely, we impose this uh, global U1 charge conservation uh, as well as time reversal symmetry. But uh, the time reversal symmetry in boson system is different from the Fermat system. It's uh, always T squared 1. So compared to Fermat system, uh, uh, the time reversal is actually uh, relatively simple. Uh, so in this sense, uh, uh, it's just a kind of a special SPT phase uh, uh, from this uh, general kind of uh, definition. But uh, on the other hand, that uh, we also uh, uh, try to show that uh, such kind of state uh, um, must be distinguishable with the trivial disorder phase if the symmetry is unbroken, which means uh, uh, there is no adiabatic path you can find to connect this state to a trivial state. In a sense, the path can even cross over to some uh, extremely strong interaction region. OK, uh, and uh, there are some early results uh, based on some very abstract theory called the cohomology theory. And the cohomology theory claims there is the Z2 square classification. Uh, so Z2 square just means there are three non-trivial phase. But uh, because of this particular kind of uh, group uh, structure, Z2 square means there are two non-trivial root phase. Because of the uh, symmetry protected topological phase, you can imagine that uh, you can always do in this stacking kind of uh, um, uh, operation. If you stack two uh, non-trivial uh, SPT phase together, it can either be trivial or could be uh, a third non-trivial uh, uh, SPT phase. So for example, in this Z2 square kind of uh, phase, you pick up uh, one SPT phase in one Z2 and one in the other. If stacking them, you can produce the third. So that's why there are three non-trivial phases. Um, but uh, it turns out that uh, actually the complete classification is C2Q, which means there could be seven non-trivial phase. So the missing non-trivial phase has been uh, first proposed by uh, Sanju and Ashwin uh, based on some field theory approach. And uh, uh, basically, they emphasize this uh, an anomalous surface topological phase to characterize this uh, uh, 3 plus 1D SPT phase. OK, and also later uh, by uh, Kapustin, uh, use even more kind of advanced uh, mathematics, so-called cobalt, and also confirm there are C2 cube classification. Um, so now we have the question is that, uh, uh, what's the universal physical mechanism for all these kind of VTI phases? And uh, we also hope uh, uh, to have some hydrodynamic description. Uh, in a, a semi-classical sense, then we can understand what happened in the system. And uh, also, because uh, uh, this kind of uh, approach, the surface uh, anomalous topological order uh, approach, can only identify non-trivial phase, but uh, there's so far no systematic way to classify these SPT phases. So we also want to ask the question whether we can have some systematic method to classify the so-called uh, um, um, SPT phases 
is beyond the proof of cohomology classification. Okay, so this is the main purpose of this talk. Uh, so uh, I will uh, first uh, uh, talk about uh, this uh, exotic vortex condition as a physical mechanism for two-dimensional bosonic topology in space. Because uh, according to this uh, group of cohomology classification, there's also a Z2 uh, uh, non-trivial classification for this uh, 2 plus 1D bosonic topology in space. So I will first uh, 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 develop some field description for field series description for this case. And then I uh, go try to go to uh, 3 plus 1D. Um, so the key feature is that if we considering kind of what has condition, uh, naturally uh, we will end, end up with something like a BF, BF theory in 3D. And uh, it's a, uh, we propose to use such kind of theory to uh, describe a multi-insulate interface in 3D. And then we're considering uh, some non-trivial linking barrier phase for this uh, what has line condition, and then we can develop some theory, generalized the BF theory, and uh, uh, propose it to uh, describe this BTI phase beyond the group of cohomology theory. And uh, uh, finally, I uh, try to propose some systematic way to construct the SPG phases uh, beyond the group of cohomology theory, and uh, provide some new examples, for example, with the and symmetry. Um, uh, finally, there's a summary and output. Okay. Excuse me, sir, I'm, I'm a little confused. So, so actually, in the Ashman Central's paper actually uh, not a new state beyond cohomology. That's one Dr. Hammond wants to make. Oh, that's how Hammond works. Yeah, but uh, you can impose uh, you want to make it. So the U1 is a subgroup of the EDF or, or not? It, it has nothing to do with E8. You can just uh, impose a global symmetry U1. But the, but, but, but the U1 has no U1, right? So yeah, yeah. Uh, no U1 is stable. Uh, and you add an additional U1, still stable. So U1 is not, it's not necessary. Yeah, of course, yeah. So in my approach, I will also show you one is not necessary, yeah, for that case. But uh, b uh, because I try to starting from this uh, picture of uh, what has line condition, so it's uh, natural to keep uh, at least one you want. Yeah. <coughs> um, okay, so uh, we start from this uh, two plus one D example, uh, and we're considering uh, some hardcore boson system. So uh, uh, this is just uh, the usual uh, barrier phase for the boson system. And uh, here we have a connected term and also have interacting term. And uh, uh, if we consider some simple fluid phase, it's uh, very simple. We just uh, condense this boson. Uh, this is a very standard fashion. And uh, if we put this kind of ansatz in this Lagrangian, we end up with the XY model. Uh, and uh, uh, now we try to revisit this idea of uh, multi insulator from some uh, different point of view. Namely, uh, we want to condense this vortex uh, to reproduce this multi insulator. Because uh, if we, in terms of this boson operator, the multi insulator is quite a, uh, trivial. It's almost just a pro product state with one boson on each lattice side. So there's <coughs> nothing interesting. But from this uh, uh, vortex condensation kind of picture, uh, well, we find that indeed, uh, even for this trivial phase, we can formally introduce some topological field theory description. And uh, then we can just uh, slightly twist it such kind of description, we will find a uh, 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 kind of non-trivial BTR phase. So, so that's the basic idea. Uh, and if we want to condense the vortex, the, the simplest way is that uh, we just introduce some uh, additional U1 gauge field, A mu tilt, to, descri uh, to describe this kind of singular configuration. Because this is, uh, theta is kind of the smooth fluctuation of the uh, superfluidity. So, just like this uh, 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 kind of go, go to the mode. Excuse me. From the Lagrangian, how can I see this is the hardcore boson? Hardcore? Uh, yeah, in the Lagrangian, usually the uh, hardcore boson are imposed by some uh, 5 4 interactions. Yeah, so that's the continuum description. So, in a lattice model, you can have sure. a Value, yeah. Okay. So. Uh, okay, so uh, once we introduce uh, uh, such kind of uh, uh, gauge field, uh, then naturally uh, uh, this XY model becomes some Higgs space, and uh, the gauge field uh, also have a Maxwell term. Right? Uh, then we just uh, play with a standard trick uh, I also mentioned yesterday. You can introduce the Hubble Strenor with transformation and uh, decouple this uh, quadratic action. And uh, once you decouple this guy, 
uh, then this uh, uh, smooth fluctuation of theta just uh, have a linear term, and you can integral it out. Once you integral out this kind of uh, term, you impose a constraint. Uh, yeah, sorry here, I lost mu. Yeah. yeah, so the constraint is just the partial mu j mu equal to zero. Uh, and then we solve the constraint by, by just introduce, uh, introduce such kind of ensembles. And you see that uh, a partial mu j mu equal to zero automatically if you introduce this ensembles. Uh, and after uh, this kind of trick, we end up with uh, 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 such kind of uh, Lagrangian. So it has a, a transcendence term. Actually, it's a kind of a double transcendence term, or sometimes we call it BF term, because A mu tilde and A, they are two different U1 gauge fields. So now we have two U1 gauge fields, uh, and also two Maxwell terms. So uh, uh, in the uh, IR limit, uh, we consider that uh, this uh, kind of uh, mutual transcendence term or BF term will dominant because it have lower scaling dimension, and we can remove such kind of Maxwell term. And uh, roughly speaking, we can say this multiphase just uh, defined by such kind of uh, topological BFBF theory. But uh, uh, such kind of theory actually is uh, trivial. So uh, trivial in the sense that uh, uh, on the boundary, there's uh, nothing interesting. So I will show you uh, why on the boundary it's uh, nothing interesting. And then we, 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 we can just twist this uh, theory and make it uh, interesting on the boundary. So, uh, uh, so in such kind of theory, uh, we can define this uh, uh, charge current, which is uh, uh, just uh, uh, this uh, field of strength of the uh, A mu gauge field, the due of the field of strength. And we can also define this corresponding vortex current, because we can have two U1 gauge field, uh, A mu field and A mu. So it's natural that, that we have both vortex and uh, charge. Uh, and then we can also introduce this uh, corresponding uh, vortex field. We call it B1, just a, a, a B, which uh, carry the uh, 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 gauge charge of this uh, A, A tilde, actually, because it's coupled to A tilde. And the B2, we call it uh, B tilde. B tilde is the vortex field coupled to the uh, A mu. OK, so uh, once we introduce this kind of uh, charge or vortex field, and we can define the, uh, their kind of time reversal and the U1 transformation in a normal, normal way. Uh, for example, this B1 is a charge field. So on the U1, it just transforms like uh, this way, which means it carry U1 charge 1 or minus 1. And uh, on the time reversal, it's completely unchanged. And then for the B2, which is vortex field, on the U1, it's completely trivial. And uh, on the time reversal, this 2 pi vortex become anti vortex. So it become B2 dagger. So this is a very standard definition. Uh, OK, now we can uh, try to look at the uh, uh, corresponding field theory. Because for any kind of uh, <coughs> transcendence theory described by K matrix, uh, uh, it, we can have a systematic way to derive this uh, uh, surface theory. So the surface theory turns out to be a Casimuli algebra. And uh, we can introduce two scalar fields, uh, this phi i and the phi j. And they satisfy this kind of Casimuli uh, uh, algebra relation. And actually, this phi i and phi j, they are related to this boson field uh, in the following way. Basically, uh, you can think about the phi i and phi j basically just the phase fluctuation of this uh, boson field. So uh, b1 or phi1 means it's the phase fluctuation of the charge field. And uh, uh, phi2, or, or the corresponding b2, is the phase fluctuation of the uh, vortex field. And now we can just transform this uh, symmetry transformation on the operator to this uh, boundary field. And we, we see that uh, under uh, uh, this uh, symmetry transformation, U1, uh, um, uh, phi1 just transform in this expected way. And uh, um, um, yeah, uh, this minus one actually can be eliminated. I think it's a useful convention. Yeah, I can actually eliminate this minus one. And uh, phi two also transform in a, uh, yeah, sorry. Uh, I think it's phi two. I should put a minus one here. Yeah. <coughs> okay, on the phi two, it changes to minus one because B two become B two dagger. Okay, so uh, on the such kind of uh, definition, uh, we know that uh, this uh, boundary uh, theory actually can be completely gapped out without a breaking symmetry. So the reason is that uh, once we have this Casimode uh, algebra, we can just define this boundary uh, largely liquid described by this uh, quadratic Lagrangian. 
so it has a, a linear dispersion. But you can also add some relevant term to the Lagrangian. For example, you can add this cosine phi two term. But uh, um, oh, sorry, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's correct. I, I, I think because here this time also have a complex conjugate, so it does not change the sign of phi two, but it changes the sign of this phi one. Okay, so uh, the key is that this cosine phi two term does not break any symmetry. So you can just put it like, uh, for example, if g is man uh, a negative at a very large, phi two just equal zero. So it's an open gap for this uh, uh, boundary Lagrange without breaking symmetry. So this is a basic idea that uh, revisits this uh, trivial multi insulate phase in two plus one d, showing why why it's trivial because uh, starting from this boundary. Uh, 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 gap this action, you can just add some relevant term to completely gap out uh, without breaking the symmetry. Uh, okay, then uh, uh, how can we imagine we uh, we can uh, produce some non-trivial bosonic uh, uh, topology insulate or some bosonic non-trivial bosonic water state? So the idea is that uh, we can imagine that uh, uh, this vortex operator B two have a composite uh, uh, structure. So here, this B2 is just a normal vortex. But we can consider some abnormal vortex. For example, this B2 uh, prime is a composite of B2 and a, a spin flip. So, so here, we need to introduce some integer spin. Uh, uh, so uh, this S minus actually is a, a flipping operator for the integer spin. And then, uh, 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 if there is no vortex, it's just, uh, uh, just uh, under a uh, spin zero, because for integer spin, we can have plus one, minus one, and zero, three states. So the idea is that uh, it's like a two-layer construction. So we have one layer for superfluid on this uh, uh, kind of triangular lattice, but there's another layer just uh, carry spin, uh, integer spin one. And uh, uh, if we design the interaction such that uh, if we create a vortex, then we just, uh, we can simultaneously also flip spin, uh, then we can make such kind of composite object. And in the place, there's no vortex, uh, it just uh, stay in the spin zero state. And the key is that uh, once we define the composite vortex in such a way, on the time reversal, there could be a non-trivial minus sign. So this is uh, actually very crucial because uh, if you play with the same trick as before, you will find that uh, on time reversal, this phi two prime have a non-trivial pi shift. And once it has this non-trivial pi shift, uh, you cannot simply add a uh, cosine phi to prime term because it uh, break the symmetry. So the way to compensate is that you actually add this uh, cosine two phi to prime. But uh, uh, because this kind of uh, uh, a term has two minimal uh, at zero or pi, so uh, if this become relevant, uh, still spontaneous break in the time reversal symmetry. So uh, uh, that's the argument that uh, uh, if uh, the water has to have a composite structure, it actually is a non-trivial bosonic polar insulating in two plus one d. And uh, if the symmetry is uh, spontaneously uh, broken, uh, uh, then it can gap out. This gap is mode. Otherwise, there's no way to gap out. So there's no way to put any symmetric gap in place. Uh, and uh, uh, we can also try to detect such kind of non-trivial two-dimensional bonanic tolerance insulator through some bulk property. So the idea is that uh, 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 due to the non-trivial action of this kind of uh, uh, what has operate, we can argue that uh, if we create a monogamous defect, which uh, basically is a kind of pi flux in the system, then this pi flux will become prime doublet because two pi flux is a uh, excitation in the system, but a pi is not. So, but you can just create it by uh, introduce this uh, defect, kind of uh, the both are hopping around some region to pick up phase pi instead of two pi. Then the claim is that uh, if you create such kind of boundary defect, uh, it will trap uh, uh, a prime doublet. So the uh, algebra calculation actually is very simple. You can just assume, like, uh, uh, because we know on time reversal, uh, this pi uh, must uh, go to minus pi. Uh, 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 but uh, 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 so here, this argument is still based on uh, this superfluid phase. But we, we hope this argument is still uh, survive in the multi phase. So in the multi phase, pi. Uh, Minus pi, they are the same, but in the superfluid phase, they are uh, two different states. And if a time reversal map for pi to minus pi, then we can just ask him uh, uh, what happens if we apply minus pi, uh, uh, 
what happens if time runs off map uh, uh, on action on minus time? So you can just apply this uh, kind of uh, op operator algebra. You can show there must be a minus sign. Uh, this calculation uh, is very simple. Because t minus pi equal to t, uh, I think, uh, yeah, b2 prime pi. So uh, here I, I just uh, write on this detailed calculation. So it's very simple because the uh, non-trivial algebra operation on this uh, uh, action of time reverse on the b2 prime is minus, minus uh, must pick up this sign. So that's a single argument that in the box there's a way to detect this non-trivial DTI case. So so this looks like a, a very similar to t squared equal, equals minus one. I mean. Yeah yeah yeah. It's a prime dominance. So that's the definition of t squared minus. But you mentioned earlier for bosonic system it's always. Yeah, so that's a non-trivial point that uh, in a uh, 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 in the in the box system it says the symmetry action like t squared minus uh, equal to plus one, but once you create this monotonic defect of pi, it will have fractionalized symmetry. So that's a non-trivial way, way to identify this uh, uh, BTI phase in two plus one D. <coughs> so here we have a boundary uh, 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 symmetry argument, but uh, on the other hand we can also have this bulk argument. So to to support this uh, non-trivial picture. Namely, if we just attach a spin to the vortex, it becomes non-trivial. Yeah. Uh, okay, so this is some simple story for 2 plus 1 D. Uh, then I want to move to slightly uh, non-trivial <coughs> things in uh, 3 plus 1 D. Uh, okay, so uh, in 3 plus 1 D, we know that uh, if we want to get uh, some multi-insulator state, it's uh, kind of more difficult because uh, the things we want to condense is not what has, it's what has line. So a full theory actually will evolve complicated string theory. So, but uh, uh, today, uh, I'm not want to uh, spend this detail in string theory. I just quote some uh, result from other group. And uh, there's a standard way to derive this uh, BF theory for the trivial multi insulate uh, starting from a string theory. But then I try to introduce this non-trivial symmetry twist or introduce some additional a uh, uh, very phase term in the BF theory to show that indeed there is some way to create all these uh, three-dimensional BTI phase. So uh, let me just uh, uh, give a review about this uh, 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 due description about this uh, uh, three plus one D uh, trivial multi insulate So uh, 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 it's very similar to two plus one D. If we starting from super fluidic phase, it's nothing than this X Y model. So it's just a three D X Y model. Okay. So uh, then we can create some uh, uh, defect. The defect is basically just a vortex line. But uh, before doing that, let me just show some uh, due description for this uh, 3D XY model. So it's very similar to this uh, uh, 2 plus 1 D case. We can just uh, 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 use some trick against the Howard strong knowledge transformation and introduce this general square term, kind of decouple this term. But again, the theta we can further decompose into singular and uh, 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 a smooth part. So this uh, theta is a smooth part, and this uh, theta b is a singular part of vortex part. Okay, then we can integral this uh, uh, smooth part. Once we integral this uh, smooth part, again we can uh, play the same game as two plus one d. We just solve this constraint. Basically, it's partial mu j mu equals zero, and uh, it turns out uh, uh, such kind of uh, Ansatz can solve this constraint. And uh, this ansatz is interesting because it introduces a two form gauge field. So, this uh, B mu nu is a, a two form gauge field. So, it, uh, you can define this the standard uh, two form gauge transformation. And uh, 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 this uh, J mu actually is invariant. Uh, okay, once we do such kind of uh, trick, uh, we can further identify this uh, so called what has the uh, current. Because the theta v is singular, so then uh, 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 this kind of uh, double derivative is non vanish because for smooth field it's always vanish. But uh, for this non single, uh, for this singular part, you can just think about this uh, as the uh, vortex current, vortex line current, 